Hey, good morning, Vineyard. Happy Wednesday. I hope your week is rolling along well. Man, I am on the struggle bus. I uh, Remembering that today is Wednesday and not Tuesday is going to be something that I'm going to be struggling with all day. Those Monday holidays throw me off. It leaves me stumbling through the week, asking what day it is and forgetting right after Tara tells me. So, man, pray for me for that. And I hope that you are not joining me on that struggle bus. Anyway, as far as weekly updates go, I've got three things I want to keep in front of us this week. First, Fall small group registration is open. So somewhere in this email, either up or probably down, there is a link in the email uh, to go to the page on our website. So you can check out the small groups, get signed up. Man, there are some great opportunities this fall. So check those out. Also, this coming Sunday is the kickoff of a new opportunity to grow, learn, and connect as we start Coffee with Christ and with Brad. Um, but each Sunday morning at 815 Brad will lead a guided discussion on a pre-selected topic, and we'll post that topic each Wednesday so you have time to kind of prepare and think about it. Um, but this is a great opportunity to, to stretch in the areas of discipleship, but also to press deeper into things that we talk about in sermons on Sunday morning. So this week, the topic is faith. And uh, this group will meet downstairs 8.15 every Sunday morning. Um, you don't have to sign up for it. You can just show up. Uh, but uh, um, yeah. I'll just leave it right there. Coffee with Christ starting this Sunday, 815 Topics Faith. Also, lastly, for updates, Friday night is uh, worship and ministry night, and that'll begin at 7 p.m. This is a time to praise God, but also ask that he release the gifts of the Spirit for ministry. It's a great way to begin the weekend, but also if you know someone that you encounter in your time between the Sundays that needs to feel the tangible presence of the living God, this is an awesome event to invite them to. So come and, and worship, get some prayer, pray for folks. Um, we'll do that at 7 o'clock on Friday night. Now, this past Sunday, we went through Romans 13, and we talked about authority, submission, and some directives that Paul gives about how we ought to operate together as the body of the Messiah. I know that talking about submission is uncomfortable, given the cultural connotation that that word has. But remember that Jesus gives us an example of submission, and his example is the ultimate demonstration of human strength. And it also connects us to the heart of God. So I want to keep this theme in front of us this week because chapter 14, which is our scripture for Sunday, is more about how we function as a group. It's about family dynamics. And all of what Paul is writing is encapsulated in the commandment to love God and love people. When we love God, the natural occurrence, the natural consequence is to love people. And when we love people, we are worshiping the living God, and we're displaying his image to all creation. But, man, I'll tell you what, submission is hard because, honestly, sometimes people suck. Also, submission to civil authorities and sometimes even to church leadership can feel dirty or uncomfortable. So, if you're kind of in that place, if you're in that tension, I would encourage you to read the book of Daniel in the Old Testament and pray through your reading as you watch Daniel and others operate in this tension. Now, while it may not make the task easier for me reading through this book and seeing Daniel at every turn keeping his loyalty to God, uh, it makes the task more accessible because I see that it's possible. So read through Daniel and let me know how that goes. And finally, in closing, I just want to say this. On, on Saturday, as a nation, we mark the 20th anniversary of the attack on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon that we know simply as September 11th. Now, this event changed the course of our nation and it changed our national culture. Uh, I know that for many of us, this, this event altered the course of our lives. And also, the events that followed because of September 11th uh, became, for good or for bad, formative events in our life. I had graduated from Marine Corps Officer Candidate School about four weeks before September 11th, and my life was impacted immediately. Also, though, without September 11th, Jenna and I would have never reconnected and likely would have never crossed paths again, let alone be married now. So it's kind of crazy how these, these events work. Uh, but at any rate, as we mark the 20th anniversary of this event, I want to encourage you to take some time on Saturday and pray for those that are still reeling from this event. As you journey through the day, also consider these two questions. The first one is, what is the role of the church in the time of crisis? Also, in, in addition to that question, can we, the Billings Vineyard, answer that role? Now remember that, that who we are emerges in a time of crisis. So if we are self-focused, chaotic, and living with no margins, when crisis hits, we act like we are self-focused, chaotic, and living without margins. 
If we collectively, though, have laid down our selfish ways, picked up our cross, and have walked the path of Jesus or are walking the path of Jesus, then when crisis hits, we are at our best and we become a refuge for the lost to encounter the living God. So with that in mind, I hope to see you Friday. Have an amazing day. Know that I'm praying for you. God bless America and also God bless the tasks that he put in front of you to do today. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.